animations are a great way to spice up your apps and delight your users. And in the next 8 minutes, you're gonna learn everything you need to get started with Flutter animations. And I'll also share with you this brand new app, complete with many examples of animations that you can use as reference in your own projects. Alright, so let's get started with implicitly animated widgets. These are widgets that you can just drop in your code to easily add animations. For example, let's take a look at animated container. Here we have a very boring container with a width, height and color. Well, let's replace this with an animated container and then we can give it a duration and this can be any value you want. Then we can convert our widget to a stateful widget and create some local variables to represent the properties of our container and pass them as arguments over here. Then we'll add a floating action button with an icon and a callback that we can use to call a method where we can call set state to change these properties like this. And now we can hold restart and when we press this button, voila, the container animates to the new values. But if we press this button again, nothing happens because the state variables are already set to the updated values. So to make things more interesting, we can add a random number generator and use it to update this variable inside the call to set state. And now our container animates to a different set of values every time we press this button. Not good enough? Then we can change the animation's curve to modify the rate of change for the animation value. The default curve is linear. But real world objects don't behave like that. So let's change this to curves.isInOutCubic. And now this animation feels a lot more natural. Speaking of curves, Flutter comes with a wide range of curves that you can choose from. And this gallery is a good way to see how they change over time. And if none of these options work for you, you can even define your own curve subclasses. Next, let's learn about twins. Twin stands for in between and is used to represent a range with a beginning and an end. And is used to map animation values within that range. And Flutter gives us a twin animation builder that we can use to define custom implicit animations. So how does this work? Well, here we have another container that we want to animate. So let's wrap this with a twin animation builder of type double and then we can give it a duration and a twin with a beginning of zero and an end value of one. And then we need to specify a builder. This will give us a context, the animation value. And if we have specified a child argument here, we can access it inside the builder. And this is good practice so that we don't have to rebuild the child every time the animation value changes. So inside the builder, we can return a transform widget. And here we can choose between rotate, scale and translate. So let's go for translate and give it an offset, which depends on the animation value like this, along with the child argument from the builder. And now we can hot restart to see the animation. And then we can change the end value and as soon as we hot reload then we can see that the container moves along to the new position. And if we want we can even extract this end value to a state variable that we can declare over here. And then we could update this based on some callback and twin animation builder will automatically animate to the new end value. For example at the bottom over here we could add a slider that takes the value as an input argument and updates the state variable with a call to set state inside the unchanged callback. And as you can see, we can now drag the slider and our container follows along by animating to the new target value. Now, note how over here we have defined a twin of type double, but there are a number of built-in twin classes that you can use to animate between different colors, sizes and much more. And if you want, you can even define your own twin subclasses for custom objects in your app, provided that you implement a lerp method, which stands for linear interpolation. However, we don't have time for that because we need to move on and talk about animation controller. In fact, by now you know the basics, but it's time to animate like a pro. And Flutter Animation Pros use animation controller to create animations that can go forward, in reverse or even repeat forever. To start with this, you'll need a stateful widget and then you need to add a single ticker provider state mixing to your state subclass. And then you can create a late final animation controller equal to animation controller. And you can pass this to the vsync argument. But what is vsync? Well, you need this to tell the animation controller to sync with the screen refresh rate of your device. And this can be done by using a ticker provider that we have added as a mixing over here. And this is what you want, because it allows you to get smooth animations that update at 60 frames per second. Okay, so let's also add a duration object like this, 
and you must remember to override the dispose method so that you can dispose the animation controller when you're done with it. And as you can see, setting up an animation controller involves quite a bit of boilerplate code. So make sure to check out this tutorial for ways of solving this problem. But for now, let's stay on track. And we can head over to the build method and over here we can wrap this container with an animated builder. And then we can pass our animation controller to the animation argument and provide a builder that will give us a context and the child that we have passed as an argument. And inside the builder we can return a transform widget. And this time we can choose transform.rotate and give it an angle that is a function of the animation controller's value. And we can pass along the child as well. And what's next? Well, of course we need to start the animation. So let's override the init state method. And here we can call animation controller dot forward like this. And if we hot restart now, we can see that the container does one spin. And if we want to make it animate forever, then we can just call animation controller dot repeat. And here we go. All right, so what's next? Well, animation controller and animated builder are super powerful and you can combine them together to create some very custom effects. But sometimes you don't even need an animated builder because Flutter already comes with a set of built-in transition widgets that you can use. For example, in this case, we can replace this animated builder with a rotation transition and just pass the animation controller to the turns argument. And if we hot reload, we can see that everything still works. But maybe you don't like rotations and instead you'd rather use a scale transition. Well, just replace this with a scale transition and change the argument to scale. And if you hot reload, you get a scale transition that repeats indefinitely. And what else can we do to customize this animation? Well, let's add a status listener to our animation controller. And we can use this to make the animation go back in reverse once it has been completed and go forward again once it has been dismissed. And we can switch this code back to forward and increase the duration to slow things down a little. And if we hot restart now, we can see the animation going forward and in reverse. And this is pretty cool, right? All right, so let's do a wrap up. And the main takeaways here are that Flutter comes with a bunch of built-in implicitly animated widgets, and there are also corresponding transition widgets. And the main difference is that implicitly animated widgets take a duration and a curve argument, whereas transition widgets take an animation argument. And in most cases, this is the animation controller that we use to control the animation. All right, so it's getting late, but there is a lot more that we still need to cover. For example, how would we go about creating staggered animations like this? Or how could we use a gesture detector to drive the animation of a completely custom UI widget such as this? Or how does animated teaming work in Flutter? Well, to find out, I recommend that you check out my new Flutter animations gallery on GitHub. This is a project that I've created to showcase all the most common animation APIs, and it comes with full source code that you can use as a reference. And as an added bonus, this app is fully responsive and adjusts itself depending on whether you are on a large screen or on a mobile device. So make sure to check this out and give it a star on my GitHub repo. And if you're serious about animations, you should check out my complete Flutter animations course. This goes far more in depth than what we have covered here and shows you how to create a completely custom habit tracking application and really takes your animation skills to the next level. And you can find all the course info and purchase it for a discounted price on this page. But don't wait too long because the price will increase very soon. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.